Hello amazing artists, today we are going to be doing some 3D hand traced line art. 3D of course means that you want your hand tracing to look like it pops up off the paper. And we're going to do that by uh, creating some very simple lines using markers. So as you can see, all you're really going to need for today is a sheet of paper, a pencil, and some markers. Let's begin. Make sure your paper is portrait, longest sides on the left and the right. And you've got a nice sharpened pencil, maybe not quite as sharp as this one, but sharp. And you've got your markers handy. So you're going to place your non-dominant hand on the middle of the paper. So whatever hand you do not use to draw, place it right there in the center. Spread your fingers out a little bit. And with your pencil, I want you to very lightly and very carefully draw around the outside of your hand to get your tracing. I'm sure that most of you have already done this at least or once or twice before, so this should not be a big deal. Keep your hands extra still. Make sure that your uh, free hand is heavy down on the paper so the paper doesn't move around as you trace. And of course, draw lightly because if you mess up, just use the eraser to erase whatever lines that you're not a huge fan of. After you've got your tracing done, now it's time to start with your uh, pencil to trace the 3D lines. Now I'm going to start right in the center where I'm going to start from the left side of the paper and I'm going to draw a horizontal line over to my hand and stop. Then I'm going to draw a curve line. That's a, this is how the uh, 3D effect happens. So I'm going to curve up and over to the edge of my hand and then a straight line again to the right side of the paper. These lines do not need to be perfect, uh, but uh, the closer you can get to straight and the closer you can get to curved when it comes to tracing on top of your hand, the more effective your 3D tracing will be. Now, if you're wondering how far apart your uh, lines need to be as you trace, I just want you to kind of keep it to maybe uh, about as wide as what you might find on three-hole punched homework paper with the blue lines you know what I'm talking about now when it comes to fingers you're gonna do the same thing except this time every time you get to a finger it's a curve line and in between your fingers you're gonna draw a flat straight horizontal line they don't need to be evenly spaced again go at a steady pace don't rush uh, don't uh, try and hurry through this project you want to take your time because uh, that's going to make the end product the uh, end result look great. When it comes to getting close to the top of a fingertip, just kind of go around the edge of the fingertip. And you can see here that you can skip around or you can do it in a systematic kind of way. And what I mean by that, by that word systematic, you can start from the top and go down. And I'll show you what that means in just a moment here. But for right now, uh, I do want to show you that every time you get to your hand, you're going to want to make a curve line and every time it's just the background of your paper it's a uh, it's a straight line and you can fill this entire paper in and as you do this you can see that the outline of your hand where you traced your hand it starts to appear 3d as though it's rising slightly up off of the paper and it's a cool little effect okay so as you get the hang of it you might be able to go a little bit faster and faster like I'm doing here. I've had a lot of practice, so if you need to go slow, if you need to uh, pause the video, that's always okay. If you need to ask your teacher to pause the video for you so you can catch up, that's okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to switch on over to using markers. So right underneath one of the lines that I drew, I'm going to start with this pink. I'm tracing very slowly, very carefully, and there's one line looks great. I'm going to choose a whole bunch of other lines again to use the same color, to use this pink with. Now, of course, uh, whatever markers you have at home, uh, I want you to choose your own colors. You don't have to start with pink. Start with your favorite color. Start with a color you don't normally use. There are no wrong answers when it comes to color selection. I've got two pink lines down. I'm going to switch it up with yellow. And I find that the more colorful you make this artwork, the more interesting it is to look at. So, you can see here I'm going rogue. I'm not even following one of my lines. I'm just using the marker. You can use your pencil lines as a guide as you go through. And there's three yellow lines. Great. Now when it comes to the empty space that's above your hand, there, there is no hand there. So you can just kind of draw straight horizontal lines from left to right. Looks good. 
Now, as I stated before, your pencil lines are a guide, so don't be afraid to fill in some missing spaces with your pencil, especially when it comes around to your uh, knuckle area. I want you to draw one big curve line, as long as you don't get to that webbing, the curved part in between your fingers. There we go. Use these pencil lines as a guide so that when it does kind of finally come to you using markers, it's not a guessing game. Because as you know, once you've you eh, excuse me, once you have used a marker, uh, you can't erase it. The marker's on there permanently, so don't be afraid to give yourself uh, a bit of a assist with these pencil lines. All right, looks good. I'm going to keep going with my yellow for just a bit longer making sure the, to kind of get into those details, get into those grooves. Okay, I'm going to go back over with my yellow, uh, pink rather. I think I can find some extra spots with my pink. All right, curve. You want to make sure that you get those curves in. If you really kind of make pronounced curves, uh, the more of a curve you have, the more it's going to look like your hand is rising up off the paper. All right. I'm going to continue on with this yellow. Keep going with as many colors as you want until you have completely filled in your paper. As you'll see in a moment, I'm going to use more than just two colors, but uh, I encourage you to use two, three, four, five. Use the whole pack if you'd like. It's going to create a cool effect the more colors you use, so uh, that's cool. And you don't have to use them in any particular order. I have found in previous classes that the students who color in a pattern, like maybe you go uh, yellow, pink, yellow, pink, yellow, pink, and you follow that pattern up from top to bottom, uh, it does create kind of a different effect. But you don't have to do that. You can fill it in randomly. The more colors you fill in, the better it's going to start looking. You want to be able to at least cover most, if not all, of your hand. And as you can see now, I've already switched to an orange marker. And on top of that, I've also sped up my video so you can definitely tell that I did not go this fast this is all uh, kind of in fast forward so that we don't actually take the time this should take you most of the class in fact there might be a few of you who don't even finish if that's the case that's okay and you can see here that I've switched over to yellow now so far from what I've used can anybody uh, raise your virtual hand and ask the teacher or tell the teacher rather are these colors warm or are these colors cool colors? I'm pretty sure everybody knows the answer, so uh, I'm going to allow you to um, take a guess, and I'll come back to the answer for that question. But in the meantime, you can see that I'm really starting to fill it in. And the more that I do that, the more the hand starts popping up off the background. If you leave too much white paper, white space, it doesn't look quite as good. So make sure you take the time needed to really fill it in. I have left some white space, some white paper showing through, but you can still kind of see where the hand is rising up. It's almost like you stuck your hand underneath some sand on the beach and slowly pulled it up out of the sand to get that 3D effect. I think this looks good. Don't forget to uh, pause the video if you need to. And also don't forget to take a picture, just like we've been doing all year long, and upload it to Schoology so I can check out your results. Great job. That's all I've got for now, and I will see you next time. And for those of you still paying attention, the correct answer is warm colors. That's right. These are all warm colors. Red, yellow, pink, orange, all warm colors.